Chapter 5 to 8. It was early morning. I was walking alongside my brother to meet with All Might. As I was walking, I wasn't saying anything, just enjoying my brother's company. Neither of us had many friends, but we made do with one another's company. I honestly enjoyed listening to my brother's mutter speech and rants when he got too excited and began thinking about heroes or any subject to be honest. It's an acquired skill since in the beginning it used to be quite annoying. As we walked on the beach I came to face to face with the real form of All Might. Truthfully, my brother's words didn't quite manage to describe him good enough. If someone can do this much damage to the symbol of peace then it's a grave problem, one I have the unfortunate feeling my brother would end up inheriting. All Might, called out Izuku with a grin, waving his hand in a greeting. The hero returned his greeting, not taking his eyes off me for a second. I looked at him and I saw a flash of recognition and what appeared to be relief on his face. Strange. He must have watched a video of me from the entrance exam. Young Midoriya, I don't remember inviting anyone else today, said All Might. Izuku blushed and looked away. I'm sorry, All Might, said Izuku. No worries, now what's your name young one, he asked. I raised an eyebrow at his frankly pathetic acting skills. If he wanted to pretend he didn't know me, or at least of me then he should learn to mask his micro expressions better. Also, is he seriously not scolding Izuku for sharing his secret with me? Though then again, he may have understood that it was inevitable for it to happen from yesterday's discussion with Izuku. My Sharingan flashed, displaying all three Tomo proudly as they spun around my pupil. I observed his body and I was quite surprised he was still walking with that kind of damage, let alone doing hero work. I turned off my eyes and gave a slight smile. I'm Madara Midoriya, but you already know that didn't you Tashinori san, I said. He seemed surprised but quickly deduced how I could have figured that out and smiled as well. I turned to my brother. Izuku, why don't you go and warm yourself up for training, I said. Okay, said Izuku and went off to the parking lot to begin his warm up. He was shaping up to be such an obedient little brother. I dread the day he discovered his rebellious side. Young Midoriya, I, began All Might before I interrupted him. Please call me Madara and before you say anything else, I bowed before him, I want to thank you. What for, asked All Might genuinely surprised. I looked at him. When I finished the UA exam and I heard what happened all I could think of was how devastated Izuku must have been, being utterly helpless in that situation. I saw from the footage that he wasn't injured, but still, he rushed into a situation trying to save someone's life, trying to be a hero. I rushed home as fast as I could and the first thing I see when I walk into the house is my brother, smiling, I could feel my eyes growing moist, god damn these jeans what is with me. All Might was looking away from me. Thank you, for saving my brother's smile and giving him the hope that his dream can come true. For this I will be forever in your debt. Anything you ask, if it is within my power, I will see that it is done, I finished. All Might was still looking away with his fists clenched. I straightened up confused. I cannot accept your debt, said All Might lowly. I was surprised, what was he talking about? I doubt your brother has told you about this, but when we first met after I had saved him for the first time from that sludge villain, he ended up stuck to my pant leg. I was running out of time and he saw my true form. When he asked if he could become a hero without a quirk, I told him that he cannot and that he should look for another dream, said All Might with clear shame written on his face. I remained impassive. So even All Might himself is not immune to the growing anti-quirkless sentiment of society. I was there, when the villain captured young Bakugu, standing in the crowd waiting for a real hero to arrive. It was your brother's reckless actions during that day, his body moving on its own, that rekindled that dying spark in my soul and reminded me that a hero should always try to save people, no matter what. It was that action that made me take him on as my successor, said All Might, I am unworthy of your thanks, let alone your debt. I was honestly at a loss for words, but I knew what I needed to say. All Might, I called his attention. He lifted his gaunt eyes and I smiled at him. We all make mistakes, after all we are only human. I understand where you are coming from, but you recognized your mistake and fixed it. You gave my brother hope. For that at least you have my thanks, I said as I held out my hand. All Might seemed so surprised and more than a little relieved. He rasped my outstretched hand and shook. I leave my brother in your care, All Might, I said. You will not regret it, young Madara, replied All Might. Dash one weeks later. The letter from UA arrived and I was admitted with a most impressive score of 358 villain points and 65 rescue points, the highest score in UA history. Izuku was ecstatic, but I could see a somewhat pinched expression on All Might's face when I told him. 
Apparently, he held the previous record and I just shattered it so hard it wasn't even funny anymore. I sometimes came to watch Izuku's training even if I wasn't slaking on my own. These next few weeks before the start of school would be put to god use, especially now that I have recreated one of the most OPHAX jutsu of all time, Shadow Clones. True, I could only produce three and that ate up most of my chakra reserves, but man oh man was it worth it. I had five weeks until school stared and by the time my first class began, I already had water release almost fully mastered. What at one time would have taken me four months or more, as was the case with fire release, I could do in a month. I hadn't yet had the time to create any water jutsu, but that was surprisingly quite easy after the first few I created. Once I know how the elemental chakra felt and how it reacted to the various hand seals, it was only a matter of finding the right combination to achieve the desired result with minimal wastage of chakra. I walked into my class 1A and as I saw the mayhem that was unfolding before me, I began to wonder if I made a mistake. The acceptance letter said that I was in class 1A under Aizawa Shota aka Eraserhead. I find it difficult to imagine the man being patient enough to deal with this rowdy bunch. Oi, you get in your seat. You're stealing my spotlight, yelled out a guy from behind me. I moved simply because I was too stunned by his arrogance to be able to come up with a reply that wouldn't have him blowing up at me. Stunned into silence my presence, I see. Well no matter I am sure I could always find a spot at my agency for a sidekick like yourself, said the guy. The fuck? Just then from the corner of my eye, I saw what appeared to be a human caterpillar with Aizawa's face. The actual fuck. The man gave me a tired smile as if he could somehow understand my pain. I doubt it. The jackass was probably cracking himself up on the inside with laughter. How the hell did a class like this get into UA? How? It took the class 10 minutes to notice the yellow human caterpillar at our door and quiet down. Good morning, I'm your homeroom teacher Shota Aizawa. Put on these uniforms and meet me outside, said Aizawa. Outside. But, sensei, staying in the sun without preparing my hair first could ruin it. Aren't we supposed to be having orientation today? Asked one of the girls. Are you kidding me? What is this, an acting school? Yeah, teach what's the big deal, said another student, and oh look, stereotypical macho bully. How lovely. Okay then. You two are expelled, said Aizawa in a calm voice. What, screamed the whole class minus me. You can't do that, said the girl. Yes, I can. UA is different from other schools. You have a problem, you take it up with the principal, said Aizawa in a bored tone. I will, said the girl as she took her purse and left through the door followed by the guy that got expelled. Jesus of NG Christ is this a dream? How the fuck did guys like these ever get past the entrance exam? The rest of you meet me outside for your quirk apprehension test, said Aizawa. Before anyone could say a thing, I was out of my seat and vanished in a body flicker to the locker room. One minute later I flickered back into reality near Aizawa in the training ground. Was that really necessary? I ask. Aizawa gives me a bored look before schooling his face into something more serious. I need to know if they have potential to be a hero. It took them 10 minutes to notice me outside the door, you noticed me almost instantly. If I had been a villain, they would be dead, said Aizawa. I grunted and nodded. I got where Aizawa was coming from. Being a pro hero was dangerous and the least he could do was to deny the honestly incompetent a free suicide attempt and ruining the school's image with their deaths. After 10 minutes I was starting to get annoyed, and I wasn't the only one. If Aizawa had the Manjikyu there would be no more door to the locker rooms. I spread out my senses and I felt my entire class still in the locker room with no one waiting near the exit. Oh, come on. I said, not really realizing it. What, said Aizawa turning his glare onto me. One of my abilities is that I can sense the location of people within a 1 km radius if I really concentrate. I can also recognize people that I have met before and spend a bit of time in their presence, I explained. And, said Aizawa looking intrigued and a little annoyed. I sighed and facepalmed, my classmates, they're still in the locker room and some are even going to and from the locker room and the classroom. Aizawa's face tightened. Well, then let's begin the quirk test. The person who doesn't meet my expectations will be expelled, said Aizawa. Uh, sensei, shouldn't we still wait for them, I asked somewhat unsure. We waited enough, was the prompt reply. It took me 15 minutes to get through all the tests. Aizawa just wrote down the results and called it a day. I was the only one who took the test. I went home that day feeling more than a little awkward. 
The next morning's headline was the mass expulsion of 19 students from class 1A and my existence as the sole student that got to be mentored by all the pros. How lovely. It has been said that something as small as the flutter of a butterfly's wing can cause a typhoon halfway around the world chaos theory. To many people, Katsuki Bakugu would come off as a loud, brash child with a great quirk. A perfect candidate to be enrolled at any hero school. What not many people realized was that under that brash exterior laid an intelligent mind that was to be feared. Even very young, Katsuki understood the way that society was structured and that despite what his parents and teachers would claim, no one was created equal. He first understood this when he met his childhood friend's elder twin brother. When Katsuki first met Madara he thought the boy to be a mere nerd stuck within books all day and week. The glare he had been pinned under while the boy delivered his unspoken threat was anything but weak. When Madara first got his quirk, it wasn't really that impressive and yet the boy still managed to beat everyone that came against him with his genius mind and cunning schemes. Katsuki respected him for that. Madara was not weak, not by a long shot. When it came time for elementary school Katsuki asked Izuku where his brother is, Izuku said that he tested out of elementary school and was on his way to test out of middle school as well. It was then that Katsuki understood on what level Madara truly was. Still he was determined to beat him. After all he can't be the number one hero if he can't beat the smart guy with the useless quirk. Katsuki would quickly learn that he was not the only special one. Madara was too. When the news came that Izuku was quirkless, Katsuki was at a loss again. Izuku was Madara's brother, his twin. Whenever Izuku wasn't with Katsuki, he was with Madara. How could the brother of such a special person be useless? Katsuki tried distancing himself from Izuku. He called him Deku now, meaning useless. He shunned him and yet the other boy kept on clinging to him. One day Katsuki was out and about putting down the extras that thought they could challenge him when Deku stepped in to protect one. Katsuki was mad. How dare the Deku try and play the hero? He was weak, quirkless, and had to be protected, that was his place in society. Sure, he was better than all the other extras because of his smarts and he would make an invaluable asset later on as a support techie for Katsuki, but he would still be a civilian. This was Katsuki's origin story, not Deku's. That day he sent the nerd home with a black eye and burns on his hands. It was a mistake he would never repeat. True, Izuku was powerless, but Madara was not and for better or worse Madara was like Katsuki in many ways. He won at any cost and ensured that his enemy couldn't rise again to threaten what he held most dear. The beating Madara gave Katsuki that day was one Katsuki remembers even now as the only time in his life that he honestly thought he would die, before the sludge villain that is. At the end of it he came out with a broken arm and wrist, a sprained ankle and a body that was more of a walking bruise. Katsuki told his mother that he got caught up in a gang fight but managed to escape. For the next month he could feel Madara's eyes on his back the entire time. Deku was keeping him company though and Madara was always along as his brother's personal bodyguard. It came to the point that no one was willing to even talk to Deku for fear of what his brother might do to them if they said the wrong thing. This kept going on until Deku finally put his foot down just like he did with Katsuki. At first Katsuki thought that Madara would beat the little nerd black and blue for talking like that to him when he was doing his job as a hero and protecting Deku, but he only nodded and left. He was never seen again intimidating people to not bully Deku. Once again Katsuki was confused. Why did Madara listen? He was smarter, stronger, and had a quirk. He was better than Deku in every way, so why did Madara listen to what was supposed to be an extra in his life? Deku was meant to be a background character in the stories of Katsuki and Madara so why did Madara listen to Deku? Katsuki didn't know the answer but he decided that if Madara the genius listened to Deku then there might be some value in what Deku said and Katsuki should listen too. Katsuki did and immediately saw an increase in his performance in the use of his quirk. Deku was not that useless, but still useless. Eh whatever, Deku was Deku no matter how you took it. It would be years later that Katsuki would see another shift in his worldview. A student managed to absolutely shatter All Might's record score at the UA entrance exam. The student's name, Madara Midoriya. The week after that was an absolute frenzy as all the extras crowded Deku to get some pointers on how his brother got this strong. Still, Katsuki's respect for Madara only increased. To have enough power to beat All Might's record and at a younger age than when All Might took the exam himself meant that you had incredible power and potential. Another shock came a few weeks later when 19 students from UA's famous class A were expelled leaving only one, Madara Midoriya. There were those that said the teacher was biased, but those extras had no place in UA in the first place. 
must have been a bad year if this was the cream of the crop. There was a class B, but their quirks were not that well suited for direct combat, not like Madara's. Katsuki had seen the leaked footage of Madara using the ground on those robots and crushing them like some trash compactor. Then there was Deku. He seemed happier suddenly and his eyes had this fire in them that he had only seen in Madara before him or the time before Deku was deemed quirkless. He was also dead tired and had scrapes and bruises from what was obviously combat training. The nerd had probably asked his brother to train him or failed at ask some teachers at UA about where he could seek training. One thing was clear to Katsuki. This year's sport festival would be interesting. To Izuku, Madara was more than his brother, he was his anchor. His big brother was the first person to tell him that he could be a hero and he was the only one that never doubted him. Madara always made time to play or spend time with Izuku. Izuku knew that if he ever had a problem he could not deal with then his brother would be by his side and willing to devote all his strength to help him in whatever way he could. Be it letting Izuku cry himself to sleep in his bed, Madara himself staying the night with him when he had a nightmare, helping him with school work, dispatching the horde of bullies that thought to take him on, teaching him how to defend himself and giving him advice on how to best train in order to take up the mantle as All Might's successor. When Izuku was nine Madara told him about his quirk that was probably not a quirk. He told him of how his eyes could see chakra in him and how he could see something called the eight gates in Izuku. Madara said that the eight gates were like valves that controlled a person's chakra and stopped them from exploding from the inside, but they could be opened if you knew how and it will grant you a boost in power enough to beat even All Might. Izuku wanted to doubt that anything could beat All Might, but Madara had never lied to him and was rarely wrong about anything. Even so, the cost of opening all of them was death, so Izuku was understanding when Madara told him flat out that he wouldn't teach him the eight gates if he had a choice. Izuku tried to meditate and unlock his chakra but nothing happened. It was more than a little frustrating for Bot Brothers since Madara kept powering forwards, discovering new and innovating ways to use chakra while Izuku was stuck. In the end the two of them decided to use a more forceful method to unlock Izuku's chakra once summer break rolled around since Madara had refused to let Izuku have chakra without supervision. Then, on the day of the UA entrance exam, while his brother secretly went to take it, Izuku met All Might who at the offered his own quirk, one for all, to Izuku as well as the mantle of successor to the symbol of peace after witnessing his actions and dedication to save Kaken. It made Izuku so very happy. He would finally get a quirk of his own and his brother would stop worrying so much about him, not that it wasn't nice that he cared so much. Madara had always cared. Even their mom was willing to look away and not investigate Izuku's injuries any more than accepting the standard, I tripped, excuse or taking his slightly ruffled state as children roughhousing when he had been beaten up. But Madara wasn't like that. He always asked where he got even the slightest bruise and Izuku knew he couldn't lie to his brother to save his life, but he was grateful for Madara's overprotective tendencies, even if he got a bit carried out in doling justice to the bullies. At least he could rein in his temper, unlike Kaken. Speaking of his sort of friend, Izuku knew that the time Kaken came to kindergarten all busted up was because he had a run-in with his brother. Izuku hadn't cared enough to notice at the time and when Madara went too far again he asked him to stop. And he stopped, so Izuku knew he could trust his brother with anything. It was why he broke his promise to All Might and told Madara about him and one for all. In the end even All Might admitted that Madara's guidance during that first month of training as well as the previous training Madara had all but forced on Izuku would pay off well. Who knows, maybe Izuku would be ready to receive one for all before the entrance exam since Madara didn't seem too fond of letting him into the exam with only some martial arts skills and an untested power. The popularity he got at school because of his brother's success was a bonus, somewhat. It brought him back on speaking terms with Kaken at the very least. Sure, it involves some shouting, but Izuku was used to the caustic personality that came with the package deal that was Katsuki Bakuku. Their relationship would never be fully mended, not yet at least, but they weren't clashing with one another each time they saw each other. Madara had told Izuku that Katsuki's violent actions and bullying of others was his way of dealing with a world that wouldn't align with his mental image of how it should look like. A world where the weak stayed weak, and the strong rise to the top and on that top was Kaken. Obviously not since the top spot would inevitably fall into Madara's lap before his brother got bored of it and let others take it for themselves, but honestly Izuku was okay with that. Madara never lorded his superiority in anything over anyone, save perhaps some old cots at the university who couldn't accept that they were wrong, and always did his best to raise those around him up alongside him. In Izuku's eyes, Madara was the one that should take the position of All Might's successor but when he broached that subject with his brother all he got was a pat on the head, a smile, and the simple words, I believe in you. 
Izuka knew that this meant his brother had entrusted him with the legacy of All Might fully as well as a shard of his very own will and legacy. Izuku would do his best to not fail his mentor and brother, the two most important people in his life. Being in school after you spent the better part of two lives dodging it was somewhat surreal. Especially since I was the only student in class 1A. In a way this was better than being in a class with students my age, or close to it, especially given that I've already graduated high school and I get bored easily. That's why I spent the entire morning bouncing from class to class and letting my teachers evaluate my skills. At the end of each class the teachers looked somewhat constipated and some of them looked at me with an unreadable expression on their face. What? Did you expect me to go easy on them? I'm a certified genius with multiple diplomas, I don't need to be taught English, I'm already fluent in seven languages. Thankfully it was time for hero basic training with Aizawa since the man became my unofficial mentor. I came into the training ground dressed in my new battle armor. I spent a lot of time arguing over my costume design with the people from the support department. Thankfully I won the argument. Now most kids would order some flashy costume with a few support items on the side to amp up their quirks in battle, I needed no such amp chakra is the undisputed ultimate tool for war in this superpowered world. My costume, if you could call it that was simply armor. It was good looking, not overly flashy and most importantly of all, functional. I had a two-part costume made from Kevlar reinforced materials. Tear proof and somewhat bulletproof. Alongside that were specially designed flexible plastic ceramic plates weaved into my suit. These were designed to stop bullets and shrapnel from penetrating through the cloth layer. I also had shin guards, a chest and back plate and shoulder guards with a high collar to protect my neck. All these were made from thin and highly resistant composites and, while they offered protection were mostly there to serve as anchor points for any other weapons and items I might add in the future. I also had full gloves with metal inserts for increased punching power and reinforced armored boots for the same reason. The suit was black with the overlaying armor a dark gray, but having patterns of red lines over them. Say what you will, the armor had to look good so that my hero image is marketable. Is that shallow? Maybe, but it was an undisputed truth in the hero industry and with my original plans for UA utterly destroyed I might as well become the best hero I can be. I always disliked doing things halfway anyways. Aizawa looked at me impressed. I suppose it should have expected it, problem child, said Aizawa in a bored tone. Again, with that nickname, what on earth is he talking about? I am a perfect model student. Though by his smirk I can probably deduce that he is amused by my reaction to the nickname. What? Did you honestly expect me to just order up a piece of brightly colored spandex and some padded gloves? I asked. That's what most kids would do if they had a quirk like yours, said Aizawa. Well, most kids are idiots, I replied. The man huffed and put his hands in his pockets. Okay then, welcome to Hero Basics. For today I want to test the full extent of your combat power and try to see how it applies to situations you might have to face in the future, said Aizawa. So basically, today is show and tell, I said. Aizawa looked distinctively unimpressed. I sighed. Okay, what do you want to know? I ask. What is your quirk? And please tell me the truth, not that half-assed bullshit you wrote down in the official paperwork, asked Aizawa. I sat and thought for a moment. I could lie and tell him some bullshit story, but I felt I could trust this guy and it would be better in the long term if I tell him the truth. Plus, I get to mess with him. Heh. Don't know, I said. Aizawa looked annoyed. You don't know, he repeated slowly trying to see if he understood me correctly. Yes, I don't know if I have a quirk, I replied. Now Aizawa looked confused, annoyed, and lost at the same time. Your quirk can shut down other emitter quirks, the area of quirks that my abilities would fall under, correct, I said. He nodded, not truly seeing where I was going with this. Use your quirk on me, I said. Aizawa waits a bit before his eyes turn red and his hair stands up. I bring up right hand and form a raisingan in my palm. Aizawa looks at me, then at the raisingan. He blinks and turns on his power again, but nothing happens. After a minute he shuts off his power and I dispel the Raisingan. Huh, so I am quirkless then, I said nonchalantly. Good to know. This means that my value just skyrocketed and I'm in no danger of losing my power to quirk suppressants or other dangers. Problem child, what the fuck is wrong with you, asked Aizawa. Don't know, I'm just that awesome, I said. How can you be quirkless? I saw you split the earth apart and spit out a fireball in the entrance exam. How the fuck is that not a quirk, 
yelled Aizawa looking like he was just about to have a meltdown. That is chakra, I said. Huh, says Aizawa completely lost. The power I used is called chakra. I was always sensitive to its existence and originally, I just assumed it was a quirk, but as I grew, I began to develop more and more facets to it. For example, chakra boosts my physical strength, speed, endurance, perception, and durability as a passive effect of having it inside my body. If I mold it in the correct way those boosts become more pronounced to the point that I can compete with people like All Might. I can also mold chakra in techniques such as the fireball and earth techniques you saw me use in the exam, I said. So, it's just like an enhancement quirk with some added bonuses, asked Aizawa. Not quite. As far as I understand it chakra is formed by combining a person's physical and mental energies, in the form of yin and yang. By manipulating these specific energies a chakra wielder can form yin release or yang release, which when combined gives yin yang release which is a way to assert absolute control over one's own self mind and body and thusly you can affect the world in ways quirks will never be able to. I don't know why I can use chakra, but I do know that every human being on this planet had the theoretical potential to use chakra, I said. Everyone, asked Aizawa surprised. Yes, everyone, however when I tried to teach my brother chakra, he couldn't unlock it and connect his mental and physical energies like I could, I said. But you could, in theory teach anyone about chakra and how to use it, said Aizawa. In theory, if I find out how to get past the natural block against chakra, I could, but I don't think that's a good idea, I said. Why, asked Aizawa. I looked at him. I had to make him understand that the level of power a chakra wielder was able of dishing out was far beyond what this world could manage. Chakra makes me a perfect combatant. With enough chakra and skill, anyone, and I mean anyone could bring down mountains and destroy cities. Quirks, for better or for worse don't have that kind of power, I said. Do you? asked Aizawa. Not quite yet, but it's not long before I do, I answered. Aizawa looked at me before nodding. Okay, that changes things. Go back and change into something normal. Meet me in the principal's office in half an hour, said Aizawa. I nodded and vanished in a body flicker. Half an hour later I was in the meeting room near the principal's office with the principal, Nizu, Aizawa, and the rest of the teachers looking at me with interest. Madara, you know why you're here, began Aizawa. Actually no, I don't, I replied. You committed a crime when you did not register your quirk properly with the Hero Association, said Vlad King sternly. I thought I just proved that I'm quirkless, I said. That doesn't matter. Before you found this out you were content to leave your quirk description as energy manipulation. Still you know of the potential this chakra power of yours had if what little you said to eraser head is true. Now I'm not blaming you for this, said Nizu. But sir, interjected Vlad King. All Might himself hasn't described his quirk fully to the hero association and yet he is still the world's number one hero. It's not truly a crime to be vague about one's power and that is what our student did, said Nizu. The principal looked at me expectantly. I sighed and activated my Sharingan. I looked at the teachers with these eyes of mine and I saw them grow somewhat uneasy by my stare. When I first discovered the true full potential of my powers, I was ecstatic. My powers are of such a level that when fully mastered I doubt that even All Might at his prime could stop me, or any truly powerful wielder of chakra for that matter, I said. This brought some worried looks on the teachers' faces. Only Aizawa's remained stone cold. That doesn't answer the question as to why you kept it a secret, said Nizu. We live in an era of quirks where almost any person can have any ability. Is it that far-fetched to believe that there is someone out there with the power to take and give quirks at will? I asked. There was an uneasy silence in the room before finally Aizawa broke it. When did you figure this out? He asked. When I was seven, after my eyes reached their second tomo and I discovered the elemental manipulation aspect of my chakra, I replied truthfully. Well, it's not so much discovered as it was foreknowledge and finally having a chakra pool of enough quantity and the freedom to be alone for long periods of time so I could start my elemental manipulation training. Elemental manipulation? Asked present Mike surprised. I wanted to reply to him but Nizu cut me off. That's not important now. Now, Madara you are correct in your assumption. There was once a person with this quirk. He was known as all for one inch said Nizu. It took me only a moment to see the connection. You have got to be shitting me, I said as I looked at Nizu in horror. He nodded, the smile leaving his face. God damn it all might. I want my brother to be a hero, but that doesn't mean he has to be on the front lines against a quirk-stealing madman that is more than likely over 100 years old. I see you put the gist of the story together, 
but don't worry All Might killed him five years ago, said Nizu. Well that's a relief. Somewhat. At least I now know who did that much damage to All Might. I remain silent as I mold the problem in my head. Okay, so I get why the kid did it, but we still can't teach him all he needs to know about being a hero if he insists on hiding his true abilities from us, said Vlad. I don't think that's the case, said Nizu smiling, if he wanted to hide, he wouldn't have told Eraserhead about his theory or asked him to help test it. I looked at Aizawa who just gave a bored shrug. I just thought it would be easier to have you present it only once, said the bastard. You I have no words, sensei. Truly, I said. Anyways, let's hear it. I'm dying to know about this, said Snipe. Firstly, I want your word that this will not spread outside of UA. This knowledge that I'm about to share is dangerous, I said. You have our word, said Nizu as the others nodded. Right. As I told Aizawa Sensei Chakra is formed from mental energies, yin and physical energies, yang, I said. We know, Aizawa told us about your potential with yin yang release as you call it, said Midnight. I snorted, you know nothing of the amount of power a user of yin yang release has. Just as an example one of the techniques I theorize might be possible is called creation of all things, I said. That and truth seeking orbs and six paths sage mode and other crazy bullshit that come as a package with it. The teachers felt chills down their spines at their students words. Anyways I split up the abilities of chakra in three main categories, taijutsu, ninjutsu and jinjutsu, I said. I noticed that Nizu looked very interested and that ectoplasm had a clone with a pen in hand taking notes. Taijutsu is the art of augmenting one's body with chakra to boost one's power and speed. You saw me use Taijutsu for most of the entrance exam. This is the form of chakra usage I have most experience in using since performing Taijutsu doesn't require actual chakra usage. I managed to create a style of combat separate from the one which you saw me use in the exam which I call Gentle Fist, I said. How is it different, asked Midnight. Gentle Fist relies on precise strikes on an opponent's body to inject chakra so that it would do damage to his muscles, nerves, and internal organs without actually harming the skin. Useful against hardening type quirk users and others that rely on their skin as a form of protection. In contrast the strong fist, which you saw me use in the exam, focuses on dealing external damage using chakra to augment my own body's strength, speed, and durability, I said. Stealing the style of the Hyuga clan was a pain, but there were martial artists that taught me the precision required for the gentle fist and since it doesn't need to shut down chakra nodes, a Sharingan has sufficient visual acuity to use it. The rest was me practicing on stumps in the forest and wild animals that I had hunted. Gukan aka strong fist was easier since that was just punching the shit out of people and there were plenty of styles that did that and worked wonderfully when I added chakra to them. That is impressive, said Vlad King. Having two distinct fighting styles almost mastered by 14 was a feat no one truly expected of a student. Thank you, but I'm not finished. Through the careful use of chakra to coat my fist or foot and its explosive release from a compressed state a single punch from me using strong fist is able to do damage close to that of one of All Might's punches if I wanted to, I said. What? Seriously? Asked Mike. I nodded, by my calculations if I increase the compression ratio of the chakra I use in my super strength technique I should be able to pulverize a small mountain in a single punch. Tsunade super strength for the win. The teachers looked somewhat nervous at that. Well, that's certainly impressive, what about, said Cementos, but I cut him off. I'm not finished, I said. A hushed silence fell on the room. The final technique I have for Taijutsu is one I have yet to try to develop because of the inherent danger it poses, not only to those around me but to myself as well, I said, I call it the eight inner gates. What does it do? asked Recovery Girl. At any given time, I use at most 20% of my full power. The eight gates are limiters my body has in place to ensure this limit is kept, I said. Don't tell me, began Aizawa dreading the answer. I nodded. This technique allows me to open these gates and bring out the full power of my body, however it comes at the cost of incredible pain and ligament damage if overused, I said. Ha, yeah, plus ultra, am I right? said Mike trying and failing to spell the gloomy atmosphere. Each gate is named for a specific thing it unlocks. The gate of opening allows the use of 100% of a person's muscle, the gate of healing re-energize the body, allowing you to fight through exhaustion. The gate of life brings your cardiovascular system to full capacity to ensure proper nutrition and oxygenation of the body, the gate of pain disables the body's normal pain receptors and boosts pain tolerance to inhuman levels but it begins to damage the muscles, the gate of limit boosts all abilities, including those that fall under the category of ninjutsu but it can cause stress fractures in the bones. 
The sixth gate of view is a further boost added onto the gate of limit as the user begins to emit an aura of chakra. I theorize that anyone who achieves this level or at least the previous one will be able to physically contend with All Might as he is now one on one inch I said. I let that sink in. The room was silent, and I was looked at in reserved awe while Aizawa looked slightly terrified. The seventh gate of wonder will cause the body to start overheating, the user gaining a blue aura as their own seat begins to evaporate. At this level the user can create air blasts powerful enough to destroy entire cities, I said. The Hiridora comes to mind in this situation. The teachers looked shocked. I don't think I even what to know about the last one, mumbled a sweating present Mike. The eight gate grants one power tens of times stronger than the seventh. It is the ultimate power an average human being can wield, but it comes at the greatest of all costs, I said. Dear Lord, don't tell me, said a trembling recovery girl. Death is the price of using the final stage of the eight gate formation by unlocking the full power of the eight gate of death. It grants one the power to enact their dying will, their final resolution when all is lost and there is no other way than to sacrifice oneself for the greater good. When opened, the user will be cloaked in a shroud of blood red vapor formed from his own boiling blood. The full use of the eight gates will last anywhere from five minutes to half an hour, depending on how fast the user burns through his chakra reserves, I said. This was the technique that Mike Guy used to deal an almost deadly blow to Six Paths Madara. Nothing in this world can match such power, not yet at least. By this point even the principal was sweating. What you described right now, that's a suicide technique, said Ectoplasm with mild horror in his voice. Bear in mind, this is only theoretical, but I haven't been wrong before and I know I'm not wrong now. The eight gates can only be used to their fullest if one dedicates their entire lives to mastering and studying the strong fist taijutsu style. Not something I plan on doing when I have other options, I said. There is more. Shit, kid what kind of monster are you, asked Mike looking at me with scared eyes. The good kind, now can I continue? I asked. Yes, go on, said Nizu. Ninjutsu is any kind of technique that involves using chakra to make alteration to the physical world. Firstly, you must understand that mastering chakra comes with certain requirements such as being able to control it. By increasing my control over chakra, I can modulate the power, area of effect and size of my ninjutsu while also boosting taijutsu. I have pretty good chakra control which allows me to use chakra to stick myself to any vertical or horizontal surface and walk on water, I said. Come on. That's seriously unfair. You can walk on water, yelled out Mike as he threw his hands in the air. Calm down Mike, said Aizawa. Come on Shota, how can you be so calm? The kid's already a monster in hand-to-hand -hand combat and now he tells me there's more than shooting fireballs. He can walk on water, walk on water for fuck's sake. At this rate we might as well call the kid a god and be done with it, yelled Mike. I hummed, well actually. Don't you dare answer that, problem child snapped Aizawa at me while the rest of the teachers looked horrified at me. Can I go on? There's still much more to cover, I said. Aizawa glared at Mike who wisely shut up and returned to his seat from where he had shot up on two feet. Continue please, said Nizu. Right, that's chakra control. It also helps boost my chakra capacity since chakra is like a muscle. Based on my chakra capacity I have a finite number of techniques I can use before I need to rest and eat to replenish it. Moving on is chakra shape manipulation, I said. The teachers looked at me as I raised my hand and on it a Rasengan bloomed to life with a whirl. I saw everyone in the room in awe at the small rotating ball of power. This is the Rasengan and it's a technique I originally designed to help me better understand chakra shape manipulation. However, it can be used to strike at an opponent and get though one's defense since it shreds whatever it touches, I said, utter bullshit for the first part, but the truth for the second. The teachers leaned back from the dangerous little ball as if it was about to bite them. Still, it's incomplete, I said. Incomplete? asked Midnight. Yeah, the component necessary to complete it is nature transformation and elemental manipulation, I said. Aizawa and Mike smashed their head in the table with a groan and a silent prayer of, kill me now. I continued nonplussed. There are five main nature types from what I've found with possible subtypes that I've yet to discover. The main are fire, wind, lightning, earth and water. So far, I have only mastered fire, earth and water release, I said. I raised my hand and on it a flicker of flame appeared, a bit of earth was sitting, and water was flowing in a circle. Ectoplasm and Midnight joined Aizawa and Mike in banging their heads on the table while Nizu had a highly distinctive sheen of sweat on his fur. Next up there are the actual techniques I created through the use of hand seals, I said. 
Hand seals, asked Nisa curiously. Yeah, I discovered that certain movements of my hands have a distinct impact on my chakra that helps mold it into what I want faster than doing it by pure willpower and it's more precise in execution as well as wasting less chakra. So far, I have only a few elemental ninjutsu and some supplementary ones. None of them are water style though since I just finished mastering it before the semester started, I said. I think I'm going to die, whispered Mike. Oh, please you have one class with problem child, I'm his homeroom teacher, spat out Aizawa. I winced. God, how pathetic can they be? Anyways, my elemental ninjutsu so far are only god for dealing damage or other tasks that require excessive force, so I have other jutsu to compensate such as the body flicker and flash step, I said. What do they do? asked Nisa curiously. They're mostly the same and mobility based. Basically, they allow me to move at high speeds. I only use flash step in combat though since it's too impractical over long distance and I never meant for it to be used as anything other than fast relocation on the battlefield, I said. Oh, good, and the last one, you said it was Genjutsu? asked Nizu with a hopeful expression. No, I have more, I said. Nizu's expression froze as I continued. I have the replacement technique which allows me to replace myself with objects of a similar mass almost instantly to get out of the way of an attack, then there's the transformation technique which is a type of illusion that I cast over my body to look like someone or something else and there is the shadow clones, I said. Shadow clones? asked ectoplasm. I out my hands in the iconic sign and beside me two clones burst into existence. Shadow clones are solid chakra constructs of the wielder, capable of independent intelligent action and being able to utilize the entire skill set of the caster. They suffer from a lack of durability though, since one good hit is enough to pop it, I said and demonstrated by punching the clone on my right. They can also be used for scouting or to accelerate learning since they transfer all they learn back to the user when they are dispelled along with any remaining chakra they might have. I can only do four at a time now since they're so taxing on my chakra. Nizu was openly crying and the other teachers were equally looking at me as if I committed some grave sin against the world. Is there more? asked Nizu. Uh, only Genjutsu and Sharingan, I said. Aizawa sobbed. Anyways, Genjutsu is the art of casting illusions with chakra and as far as I can tell there's no limit to what I can do with it and it can only be undone by either extreme willpower, pain, or a small pulse of chakra, I said. So, perfect, unbreakable illusions on top of everything else? asked Cementos. Um, yes? I answers asked. Cementos looked to the sky, this is God punishing us for our sins, he said. I sweat dropped. Can't these guys be more optimistic? Anyways, I still have to talk about my Sharingan, I said. And what godly technique is that? asked Aizawa sarcastically. It's not a technique, I said. This piqued their interest and I waited until they were all looking at me in the eyes. Everything I've said so far can be learned by everyone if they put their back into it enough. The Sharingan can't be learned, I said. So, what is the Sharingan? asked Aizawa. These are, I said pointing at my eyes. Everyone looked confused. They are a special ocular power unique to me and me alone since as far as I know my brother can't awaken them, I said. Aizawa choked and went white along with the rest of the teachers. You have a brother, whispered Midnight as if she's suddenly remembering something. A twin actually, I said. Vlad was crying. Don't worry he can't use chakra, I said. I peeved me a little to see the entire room breathe a sigh of release. In fact, he's training right now with all might to strengthen his newfound quirk, I said with a sadistic grin. Oh, said Nizu as the teachers paled again. Serves them right, jackasses. Yeah, well anyways, these eyes of mine grant me access to two abilities the eye of insight and the eye of hypnotism, I said. The entire room looked resigned. The Eye of Insight allows the bearer to see through the movements of an enemy and increases one's perception to such levels that even a decent chakra wielder can't stand up against a competent Sharingan bearer in a one-on-one -on -one Taijutsu match. They can also see chakra and allow the bearer to recall instantly and perfectly everything they've seen with the Sharingan to the point that they can copy Taijutsu moves. It also removes the usual weakness of Tunnel Bison that I would have had when using Body Flicker and Flash Step, I said in pause. The teachers looked at me blankly. Right, the eye of hypnotism allows me to cast illusion though I contact and I suspect it allows me to hypnotize people into doing what I want, such as giving me information. I haven't tried it yet, but I think I can use them to cast illusions on my opponent mid-battle and get him to mess up to gain an opening, I said. Anything else? asked Nizu who was still crying. Not really, oh yes. 
I can also use my chakra as a sonar to sense people and I can recognize them based on their chakra signatures and I still must tell you about those two forbidden techniques, I said. Forbidden techniques, asked recovery girl with a noticeable amount of dread. I nodded, Izanami and Izanagi, two techniques that are only available to Sharingan users and I call them forbidden because they have the same relative cost as the eight gates, I said. The teachers shivered. The first one is Izanagi. With this technique the user can alter reality and turn it into an illusion and turn illusion into reality, it's a jetsu that has the power to decide fate and it can even restore the dead, I said. The teachers looked like they've been slapped as they looked at me with horror. Such power, whispered Midnight. Izanagi is a technique based in Inyang release. This should give you an idea of just how powerful chakra is, I said. But still, to rewrite reality in such a way that you can bring back the dead, whispered Aizawa. The cost of using this technique is the loss of sight within one eye. I suspect that if I ever use this technique would be because I died, I said. The teachers shivered at my words. And Izanami? Honestly Madara, I'm afraid to ask, said Nizu. If Izanagi is the jutsu that alters fate then Izanami is the one which decides fate. When cast the target is stuck within an infinite loop until they take the correct course of action that the caster intended. Izanami also causes blindness within one eye, I said. I fell silent as I waited for a reply. It took some time before Aizawa spoke up. Overpowered problem child, you can go home for today. We need to have a talk, so come back tomorrow, okay? Asked Aizawa. Okay, I said and vanished in a body flicker. I returned to normal speed outside UA and grinned with a murder face that had almost every student in the vicinity running away screaming and my namesake probably feeling very satisfied with himself wherever he was. Messing with the teachers was fun. Furthermore, I needed them to realize just how powerful I am and could be. Still, if they reacted like this to the snippets of information about Izanami and Izanagi, I don't think that their hearts would survive if I told them about the Manjikyu Sharingan or Rinnegan and their broken OP abilities. Ever since the day that I met All Might at the beach I've been thinking and because my plan to coast though UA is mostly shot to hell and back I might as well do something relatively out of the ordinary for me. I'm going to take All Might's place as the pillar that supports society. The man is at the end of his time anyways and Izuku won't be ready to take on the burden anytime soon. I need to think about the new information I gained about the so-called king of the underworld. All for one, your time is done and I will see your legacy shattered. Aizawa wasn't sure what god he offended in order to get stuck with the overpowered problem child as the single student in this year's class that had enough potential to be a hero. It just wasn't fair. The boy was quirkless, not that Aizawa had anything against them, but they were the people in most danger in this world. If even half of what Madara said was true, then any person in the world could theoretically use chakra. If one looks at it logically it was only a matter of time before someone like Madara came along and cracked open the floodgates to a whole new realm of undiscovered abilities. Furthermore, the sheer versatility of chakra places it in a league of its own and its users in the same bracket of power as top pro heroes, maybe even surpassing it. Physical augmentations to the point that the punching power and durability of the user was enough to rival all might and the best hardening quirk out there, perception augmentation to the level that a normal person would have no chance against a chakra wielder, maybe even requiring the likes of Sir Night Eye to beat it, and that is only with just basic chakra. If Madara managed to make his eight gates formation technique work for him without killing him or inflicting self-harm, then that physical power would shoot up beyond what any other person bar another chakra wielder and maybe all might could manage. And that's not even taking in consideration the problem of ninjutsu. Being able to bend the elements to your will, nigh unparalleled three-dimensional mobility, insane burst speeds that make you appear as if you're teleporting, extremely powerful localized attacks and those are just the basics. Even a fraction of these abilities would make a hero powerful enough to take a spot in the top 10, having all of them on top of a genius mind that could devise ways in order to use them most effectively was a nightmarish combination. For the villains that is. Not for the first time, Aizawa thanked whatever god was out there for making one of Madara's goals to protect his naive and self-preservation lacking hero-worshipping brother. Now, Aizawa didn't really know if that was truly the case but given the fact that he was chosen to be All Might's apprentice by the man himself came with an almost certain guarantee that Izuku Midoriya will be another problem child. Probably overpowered as well. But for now, it was his older twin that Aizawa had to deal with. Aizawa yet again thanked whatever god there was that Madara seemed to not care about villains very much or at least was partial to the hero's side and not the villain one. So, who here thinks that we just dodged a bullet on this kid? asked Snipe. Aizawa raised his hand along with every other teacher in the room. Yes, we dodged a most dangerous bullet. 
If Madara were to switch sides and become a villain, it could be the end of hero society as we know it, said Nizu. We can't allow that to happen. If he can teach others to use chakra, we might be facing a crisis not seen since the first time quirks appeared in the world, said Vlad. Indeed. We can be thankful that Madara knows of this danger of doing so and has promised to not share chakra with anyone, said Nizu. Anyone but his brother you mean, said Aizawa. The other teachers looked at him blankly. Do you honestly think that he will let his brother loose in the hero industry without trying everything in his power to make him more powerful? asked Aizawa. You have a point, Eraser, but the kid told us himself that his brother was unable to use chakra, said Vlad. He probably meant that he was unable to use chakra on his own, after all, even if chakra is a borderline supernatural ability, the presence of the eight gates suggests that it's rooted in biology. It may just be possible that Madara never thought or found a way to unlock the chakra of a person from the outside since he trained with his power in utmost secrecy before the entrance exam, said Nizu. You're probably right, but we should still call All Might and tell him about what the kid told us when concerning chakra. After all, the man is training his brother, said Midnight. Agreed, I'll call All Might at once. I'll say this again, we must keep hidden what was discussed here today. It would be quite disastrous if the villains or the hero commission were to find out about our student, said Nizu. The teachers nodded. The political aspect of hero life coming to the forefront of their minds. More importantly, what are we going to do with the overpowered problem child, asked Aizawa, even if you don't add chakra to the mix, I can almost bet that he will blast through everything we have him study. This is the kid that regularly attends the nation's top science conferences for God's sake. Heck he came to UA just so he can say that he graduated the best hero course in the country and gain a license to use his so-called quirk. You're most correct, said Mizu, still, we can't overlook this opportunity to see how a genius will flourish under the direct tutoring of multiple pro heroes. Aizawa groaned. It was just typical of the principal to turn a problematic situation into an experiment. Anyways there was a lot to get done in preparation for tomorrow's meeting with the problem child. In another part of town, I was walking down the street towards Tacoba Beach. Even now, barely a month and a half into his training my brother has made visible progress. Though this is mostly because I took a personal interest in his fitness since he was 13. After all, a great mind must have a body to match. I have another three months until my summer break. I believe that my brother can finish cleaning this entire beach by January at the latest. That will give him another month and a half, depending on when he finishes it, before the exam. I finally reach the parking lot and see All Might's car there. I look down to see my brother in the middle of dragging a very heavy piece of furniture across the sand and to the pile that I will most likely have to bury into the ground with my earth style. Looking at it I should probably do that now, before it becomes too big. Young Madara, what are you doing here? Asked the emaciated All Might from down where he was observing Izuku. Oh, nothing. I just came to see how your training was going, I said. All Might accepted the answer with a nod. So, should I do something to deal with that pile of trash? I asked pointing at the mountain of trash my brother was currently building. Can you? Asked All Might surprised. In a way, yeah. I can sink it like I did the ten pointers and crush it, or I can move it into a container, I said. HM, I think I have some people I can call to arrange transport for the trash, said All Might. We fell into silence, but I could feel something tense about it. I spoke with the principal of UA today, said All Might, finally breaking the silence. Oh. I asked somewhat surprised. I never imagined that your power was something other than a quirk, or that it can be so versatile and powerful, said All Might looking somewhat pained, in a way I can say that I'm jealous of you. You see, I too was quirkless before I gained one for all. I was so surprised, that I couldn't speak. All Might was quirkless. That sort of explains the attitude he had when he originally met Izuku and the sense of kindship I felt between the two. You managed to unlock the hidden potential of every human being, and at such a young age, said All Might. I don't think that's the case, I said. This gained All Might's attention. The only quirkless person I could study was my brother and he never managed to unlock his chakra. I never told anyone this, but to my eyes his eight gates shine brighter than other people. In fact, the greater the power of one's quirk the dimmer the eight gates are, I said. You think that it's connected with why we haven't discovered chakra, asked All Might. In a way. I think that the quirk factor actively blocks a body from merging their yin and yang energies to form chakra and uses that energy to power itself. I think I can brute force this block, but I don't want to try anything that might hurt the chances my brother has for success in this world. I'm afraid that your quirk will have to be enough, 
at least until I learn more about chakra, I said. From the lecture you gave the teachers on your power I think you know it pretty well, said All Might. Not really. I don't know how I know of Izanami and Izanagi beyond the fact that I woke up one day and I just knew. In the same way I just know that there's more to chakra than what I have discovered, I said. Explanation was mostly bullshit wrapped with a layer of truth. After all I couldn't just say that I'm a reborn 20-something year old genius man from a world with no superpowers that gets to live with a power he's only read about in manga when he was young. I saw All Might shiver. I can guess what he's thinking about. You're worried I'll turn in another all for one, I say. All Might snaps his head to me so fast that worry for his neck. How do you know that name? asked All Might in a whisper. I looked him in the eye. I theorized the possible existence of his quirk when I was seven and discovers elemental ninjutsu. It's one of the reasons I'm so secretive about my abilities. If it turned out that my chakra was a quirk, then how much more powerful do you think All for One could have become? I ask. Too powerful, whispered All Might. I know that there's some connection between All of One and One for All. I hope you know what you're doing because I don't want my brother to have to inherit your war, I said. He won't. I made sure of that, replied All Might with fire in his eyes. Somehow, I'm not so sure. At any rate, if it does come down to a war between heroes and villains just so you know, I won't abide by society's no-kill rule, I said coldly. What? asked All Might surprised. I'm sorry, All Might, but in war there is no place for mercy. That doesn't mean that I will kill every low life I encounter, but just know that I won't hold back my power just for the sake of not killing anyone, I said. I'm not a monster, but if a few happen to get incinerated by my great fireball or drowned by my water techniques, I won't bat an eye. Oh, I see. You had me worried for a moment there, young Madara, said All Might, looking strangely relieved, do you believe we're headed for a war? Seriously? I just told him that I'm willing to kill villains which, while technically not against the law for a pro hero, it's usually avoided for the sake of their image and because you have to have a very good reason as to why you killed that person. I honestly don't know, but it never hurts to be ready, especially with the symbol of peace on his last legs, I said. There is talk of pushing for an early graduation with your class, said All Might trying to change the subject. I snorted, you mean with me. Is this the principal's attempt to test if it's better to have mentored students rather than full classes? I asked. Uh, maybe, said All Might, failing miserably to hide his nervousness. Whatever, keep training Izuku. He has to get a handle of one of all before we send him the entrance exam, I said. I left the beach. I too needed to train and create some jutsu for water release and by the end of the school year it was a must to master all five elements and begin my work on Jin Tun, dust release. Having a technique that can disintegrate matter would be useful. It's unfortunate, but this entire situation utterly destroyed my original plans for the future. My Sharingan flashed as I looked back at All Might. The power within him was dimming and I doubt that it will last another four to five years for there to be a peaceful transition of power between him and Izuku. Sigh. The things I do for the sake of peace. I really hate that I'll have to play this role, but I'll play it nonetheless. I'll become the pillar of strength that the world needs until you're ready to take that role from me, Izuku. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.